name is Justin Zimba. I am the America's Civil Product Support Team Lead. In this session, we're going to discuss the system requirements for the Civil 3D 2011 in regards to both RAM and operating systems. Let's start with the big question on everyone's mind. Any big changes for 2011? Well, I'm happy to say that this year we will have a native 64-bit version of Civil 3D. This is something that our customers have been asking about for quite some time now, and I'm happy to say it's finally here, and it's going to come with some huge performance gains. Before we dive in, I want to give a general overview of the areas that we will be talking about. We will begin by reviewing the basics of memory, how much is necessary, and what exactly is the 3 gigabyte switch. We will also discuss the differences between 32 and 64-bit environments, as well as the advantages to upgrading to a 64-bit environment. And for those not ready to upgrade to 2011 immediately, we will discuss what options are available for them. Let's start with memory. I think it's important to review some of the basic definitions to make sure everyone is on the same page. There are two basic kinds of memory, physical and virtual. Physical memory refers to the actual hardware that is installed in your machine, otherwise known as RAM. Upgrading this is possible, but Titan size is going to be limited by your motherboard. When purchasing a new machine, it is important to look into what upgrade options you have. Virtual memory is comprised of both physical memory plus the designated space on your hard drive called the page file, or sometimes called the swap file. When using a page file, memory is parsed into chunks that can be non-contiguous. Because the hard drive is always slower than physical RAM, performance is going to take a hit when venturing into this area. The page file size can be set by the user, but it's typically a good idea to let the OS handle this, and that's how it is by default. For the adventurous types, this can be figured under system properties. Remember, a huge page file does not mean huge performance. While increasing the size of this may prevent a memory-related crash, overall performance is still going to be slow if there's not enough physical memory installed. So how much memory is required? Well, I'm still going to talk about both 32-bit operating systems and 32-bit versions of Civil 3D, as I realize not everyone is going to upgrade immediately. For those still on a 32-bit operating system, whether it's XP, Vista, or Windows 7, the maximum physical RAM that can be installed is 4 GB. Additionally, while not required, we do recommend that you utilize the 3 GB switch. We will talk about this a little bit later in greater detail. For those upgrading to a 64-bit operating system, a minimum of 4 GB of physical memory installed is required. However, we strongly recommend at least 8 GB or more to get the full benefits of the 64-bit environment. The key here is that we don't want anyone not upgrading to a 64-bit OS just because they only have 4 gigabytes of RAM. You should still make the jump to 64-bit if you have the option, even if you're still on 4 gigabytes of RAM. I say this a lot. RAM is cheap. Waiting for your computer is not. A quick search online will show you that you can buy an additional 4 gigs of RAM for under $100. If you weigh the cost of this $100 compared to the amount of time that you'd spend over the course of the year waiting for your computer, you'll see that this really is a financially beneficial upgrade for you and your company. Upgrading your RAM is probably the best performance upgrade you can do for your computer. And for those looking to purchase a new machine but have a limited budget, I would recommend that you focus more on the RAM and less on the processor. What operating systems are supported? We have Windows 7, Windows Vista, and Windows XP in both 32 and 64-bit versions of each. However, just because they're supported does not mean they will all perform equally. Here you will see a chart that lists out the operating systems in recommended order. You will notice that Windows 7 64-bit is going to be the ideal operating system, whereas XP 32-bit version is at the bottom of the list. Unfortunately, this is where we still see most of our users. As you can see, all of the 64-bit versions are at the top, followed by the 32-bit versions with 3GB switch enabled, and lastly, the plain 32-bit versions. Ideally, we'd be seeing more people making the jump to Windows 7 64-bit. There is a huge increase in performance compared to XP32 with only 4GB installed. 
Next, we're going to review the basics of 32 versus 64-bit environments. First, let's go over some terminology. As mentioned earlier, virtual memory is the typically referring to the physical memory plus the page file. Virtual memory address space is what is used to describe the total amount of memory accessible to any application. And lastly, it's important to note, as a general rule, most 32-bit applications can still be installed on a 64-bit operating system. This is not always the case, such as older versions of Civil 3D, but if you still need a copy of 2009 or 2010, these can still be installed. You're going to find that there's several limitations of a 32-bit operating system. As mentioned earlier, 32-bit operating systems are limited to 4 gigabytes of installed RAM. This is a limitation of the 32-bit environment. 32-bit applications are still limited to 2 gigabytes of virtual memory address space. And remember, that's the amount of memory that the application can access. So those of you with 4 gigabytes of RAM installed will still hit a limit on an application level much sooner than the 4 gigabytes. So if you look at your task manager and see that you don't get above 1.7 gigabytes or 1.8 gigabytes, this is the reason why. I do want to point out that these limits are theoretical limits. In other words, in real world situations, you are not going to hit that ceiling of 2 gigabytes. You'll hit that much sooner. So is there anything that can be done to a 32-bit operating system to help performance? Well, somewhat. First, make sure that you're maxed out to an installed 4 gigabytes of RAM. Unfortunately, I see customers all too often who are trying to squeak by with only 2 gigabytes of RAM. Aside from upgrading your physical RAM, you can also enable the 3 gigabyte switch. This switch can increase the per application limit of the address space from 2 to 3 gigabytes. This doesn't work for every application, however. The application must be large address aware, but 2009 and 2010 versions of Civil 3D can do this. Again, it's important to point out that these are theoretical limits. You're going to hit that memory ceiling sooner than 3 gigabytes, probably closer to the range of 2.6, 2.7 gigabytes. So is the 3 gigabyte switch worth it? In general, our customers with 4 gigabytes of RAM installed and who have enabled the 3 gigabyte switch have found it to help quite a bit with performance. This is not a cure-all and it's not going to fix every problem, but if you have a large file that is borderline too big, this may give you the extra resources to work with that file. For those of you who haven't used the 3 gigabyte switch, this is an option that's added to your boot INI file, so you will have the option of booting with or without the 3 gigabyte switch after each reboot. I should point out that this is an option put out by Microsoft, not Autodesk. You can search their website to get directions on how to do this. There have been some cases where people have had issues with this, so it may not be optimal for everyone. So what are the advantages of going with a 64-bit operating system? Depending on the version of the OS that you have, you can install up to 192 gigabytes of physical RAM. Let me repeat that, 192 gigabytes of physical RAM. Well, we're obviously not there at this point. And there are some differences between the flavor of the OS that you have. For example, Windows 7 Professional will recognize up to 192 gigabytes of installed RAM, whereas Windows 7 Home Premium will only see 16 gigabytes. Vista and XP also have their own limitations. The other limitation for installed RAM would be the motherboard. Currently, I'm not aware of any motherboard that would allow you to install 192 gigabytes of RAM. And to be honest, that is going to be an overkill at this point. Most boards on the market right now are going to have either four or six slots with the top end consumer boards maxing out at 24 gigs of installed RAM. I wouldn't worry too much about this limitation. Again, eight or 12 gigabytes of installed RAM is going to be more than enough for all but the most advanced power user. And I will say it again, if you have only four gigabytes of RAM installed, don't let that stop you from upgrading. It is still advantageous for you to do so. If you are on a 64-bit OS and you are using a 64-bit native application such as Civil 3D, there's virtually unlimited amounts of address space available to that application. Again, this is going to be limited by the amount of RAM you have installed, but still, this is a huge change coming from a 32-bit environment. 
for those of you who have upgraded to a 64-bit OS, but for whatever reason are still using 32-bit versions of Civil 3D, you're still going to see a performance increase. Those 32-bit applications will now have a theoretical limit of 4 gigabytes of virtual memory address space. Remember, on a 32-bit OS, we were looking at a limit of 2 gigabytes and a little bit more with the 3 gigabyte switch enabled. And lastly, with the additional RAM, there's much greater headroom to run multiple applications at once. I want to give you an example of what can be done on a 64-bit operating system, even with the 32-bit versions of Civil 3D. This was an experiment I did a little while back on my personal machine running Vista 64-bit with 8 gigabytes of RAM installed. I hear the question a lot from users asking if upgrading to a 64-bit operating system is worth it, even if they're not using or ready to upgrade to the 64-bit application immediately. Here is a list of the items I had running all at the same time. Sybil 3D, 32-bit, with 11 copies of a 42 meg drawing. That is 11 copies all at the same time. Google Earth, Google Chrome browser with 15 separate tabs, Windows Live Writer, Camtasia Studio, and Windows Media Player streaming some music. Even with all of this, I still had no problem working with my drawing file. So in conclusion, 2011 brings some great changes. 64-bit is finally here and the performance gains will make a lot of users very happy. RAM is the best place to spend your money for an upgrade. Always install as much as you can. For those not upgrading to 2011 immediately, you still will see performance gains by going to a 64-bit operating system. Not only that, but you've already laid the groundwork for when you are ready to upgrade. Of all the supported operating systems for Civil 3D 2011, Windows 7 64-bit is going to offer the best performance. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy Civil 3D 2011.